Well, happy new year, everybody. Although it is miserably raining for the third day in a row. <laughs> I came to check my cable restraints this morning, first day of 2022. All the rest of them were intact, but I have one down here and it looks like a deer probably stepped in it and pulled it, pulled it out. You can see that it's closed all the way down and it, he just pulled the cable straight and away he went. Just pulled his leg right out of it. But uh, I didn't see any other action on any of the other traps. But the weather's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. We're gonna reset this and then we'll be on our Let's way. The cable right there. He's in this little trail by the, the opposing farm here. That's what's nice about it. You just step right out of it. Didn't wreck the set or anything like that. So I'll just put it back up on my support. There's my support wire. And we'll be good to go. All right. Here it is. January 3rd. First check. The first catch of the new year, I should say. Okay, I had a rat trap in here in this run. I had another rat trap here in this run. This one is gone. I come down and I see it laying on the bank over here. It's like, uh-oh. I had this situation last year. Look at the pieces. There's the hip bone. There's the rear leg. And my, my rat's been eaten. So he's been eaten out completely right down to the skin there's nothing left of him good head catch on it though nice big rat but yeah uh i had this happen last year where a bald eagle actually came down where i trapped the rat in shallow water and the the back end of the rat was floating up in the water or something and this is exactly the same almost as what uh, had happened before it, the rat was completely eaten out from head to toe all that was left was the skin so i think i had the same situation here uh it was definitely a powerful raptor that that pulled a stake out of the ground but he couldn't fly with the trap <laughs> he couldn't fly away but yeah, when, the, when I, I, I had the same issue last year, I caught a rat that was in shallow water and this bald eagle came down and uh, grabbed the rat out of the water, but he couldn't pull the trap up and he just ate the whole rat out like a tube, like a tube. That's all that was left was the skin. But yeah, there he is. So this is makes number 17, but unfortunately I'm gonna have to do some magic to salvage that hide. <laughs> it's pretty much ruined, but what I might do is, uh, Skin the rest of it out still and, and see if I can salvage it. Maybe I'll do a hoop tan or something on it. We'll see. We'll see what's left of it. You can see we're starting to eat the front leg there too. He couldn't get up any further because the trap had him around the head, but. All right, there's my f official first catch. Well, as you can see, I skinned out that the hide of the, the raptor victim. <laughs> That's all that was left. <laughs> Head and shoulders, pretty much. That was it. Uh, I did save most of the hide, so I, like I said, I'll probably uh, skin it down and tan it, and, and I'll, you know, see what I can do with it. But I'm not gonna waste it. But you can see some of the other. I want to show you the the change in in color here from rats that I had trapped earlier or later. Actually, if I come over here. I have one here now. So this is, a, I can get under the light here. This is an early season. This isn't like a juvenile rat, it's a pretty small one. He's one of the smaller ones I caught, but you see how his skin is kind of dark in color, right? He's just starting to pale in the back there, you can see it. But these skins here, these are much later catches. Like this one. Now you see how much white is in there. This is one of the rats I took when the pond was pretty much frozen. See how his skin is really pale? Got the big areas of white. That's like primed up fur. 
Same with this one. This one's a little darker in the back where he's starting to get the white and then his belly was pretty much white. This is one of the bigger rats that I caught. You can see it there, look at the size of that one. Th this is actually the full length of a stretcher. His tail was right at the end of a stretcher, so that's a pretty decent size one. You can see here that he had a lot of weight in him as well. But yeah, that's that was a pretty good size one. You can see here if I held them both up together, you can see the size difference. <laughs> right a little, little bit of a difference there that's the difference between your small rat and your magnum rat but uh, i got quite a few large ones like that uh, i got a few smaller ones but i got a, a decent so some that were really decent size but yeah that was the the first raptor issue i've had this season uh, if you look back on my videos last year, I had an issue where a bald eagle came down and ate one of my rats. The landowner actually seen him come down. That's how I knew it was a bald eagle. The eagle came down, grabbed the rat out of the water, took it up on the bank, and then ate it. But uh, rat trapping is almost over for me. It's the end of the end of the week. I did find one fresh uh, run in a, a neighboring pond today that I've been watching. And I seen silt in that run today, so I, I might go in tomorrow. It's it's probably going to be frozen, but I'll, I I need my waders. It was too deep. The the den entrance wasn't at the bank; it was out in the water. So we'll see. I'll go down tomorrow and see if I can get at it. It, it, it may be frozen over. It might be too late. But uh, yeah, we had the the rat the raptor victim today. But you have to deal with that. You know, sometimes that happens. I, I guess the, it could have been a big red tail hawk, but I guess he, it was cold and he needed a meal worse than I needed that fur. <laughs> I guess that's how it goes. Okay, something else I want to show you is here quick. I just actually picked this up on a trip to Bass Pro Shop. Uh, it's an outdoor edge. It's an Onyx EDC. A little knife. I was looking for different knives for skinning and uh, caping and stuff like that. Mostly skinning because it been skinning a lot of animals so uh this is a, actually has a replaceable blade it's a it's a regular folding knife but the blade on it is like a scalpel so there's a little button in the back here you press the button and it pops the blade out and then you replace it when it's dull you can replace it with another one like so man i'm impressed with that that thing skinned that groundhog like butter. It was like effortless, really effortless. Now, it's sharp enough. If you make a mistake with it, it's going to cut immediately. But to for skinning, especially for skinning, especially if you're skinning a lot of animals, uh, that worked really well. It, that's the, one of the smaller ones. It's a three-inch. But that blade is like this. You could shave with that blade. And it's it's thin, but it's still pretty strong. But the size, you know, the size of this little knife, it's just perfect. It's perfect for skin, like a perfect skinning size for skinning fox or skinning coons or skinning rats or anything like that. But I'm going to see how well it maintains an edge. Uh, you could, of course, you could sharpen it. You may put a little hone on it. You could probably, you know, bring the edge back up on it. But you can buy these replaceable blades for it. This was a... A six pack of blades that I got when I bought the knife too. See, so it a, it just it clips into the back of the knife. You can see the knife here on the side. But man, knives are important for skinning. I'm, that's something I really want to improve, for ne for next season. I'm winding down in this season. Of course, hopefully we'll catch a few more animals. But uh, knives are something I want to improve. I have you know knives that I use. I tried to keep them sole purpose. So. I have knives that I use for uh, skinning and gutting deer. Uh, I have knives that I use for skinning, you know, fur-bearing animals. I have knives that I use for butchering deer. And, you know, I use each one for each purpose. But, yeah, good knives are a good investment, especially when you're skinning a lot of animals. Uh, 
you know, it makes it much easier. It's so much easier. It, it, there's nothing worse than struggling with a dull knife. <laughs> it's just, it's horrible. But yeah, I thought I'd show you that, that it worked really well. I'm very pleased with that. And it wasn't that expensive. I think I paid uh, $20 for that knife and probably about 12 or $13 for the six pack of blades. So that'll last me quite a while. It, the knife itself came with three blades. Now they have different sizes. You, there's a three and a half inch, there's a five inch, there's an eight inch that, you know, they have one that you can get good hooks on it and uh, it comes with a boning blade and a caping blade. But uh, something I'm gonna do a video on in the future, just some of the different knives that I have and ones that I like and uh, ones that I use. I just put a set in under ice here for muskrat. You can see the bubble trail, look the bubble trail coming into this track here. It's still muddy, so I'm hoping they're still using it. No, all I hope they just get out of here without falling into the ice. This is a good bit off the bank, so maybe we'll come back tomorrow and have a ride. Okay. <laughs> Cutting my last muskrat traps out of the ice. I have one in the other pond for two days now. I've done two checks on it, no rat, so I'm assuming the rat is gone. But you can see here the pond is frozen now. It, it, the tip of my trap is there frozen. I've knocked the ice off it. I got one more in here. I'm gonna check the ones in the creek. So now that the pond is completely frozen, the rats can't get back into it. So there's no point in me leaving these traps in here. Uh, I'm expecting some snow tonight. So we'll see what that brings. Time to go looking for some uh, canine tracks in the snow. But it's a sad day when I have to, it, I have, only a few more days left to the end of the season. It's the ninth, so it's Thursday night now. Sunday would have been the last day for water trapping. So, like I said, I'm gonna pull these up before we get the snowstorm. I almost trapped every day of that season. I had traps out. No mink. I got lots of muskrats. I got coons. Uh, I got possums, but absolutely no mink. Not one. No sign of a mink. All right, let's get these out and then uh, we'll be on our way. Oh, there we go. There we go. Look at, look how thick that lace is already. Nice. You can see bits of muskrat the, the eagle ate the other day there on the bank back in the vehicle here out of the cold uh pulled some of my sets i only have a mink box out uh, i took the other trap out of the pond i believe that rat was gone uh he may have exited that hole before i put the trap in because i've had the trap in there for two days now and i haven't caught anything out of it so just there, i don't think there's anything moving in and out of it uh I cut the last of my traps out of the pond here. It's pretty much frozen over, so I know the rats can't get back into it until the ice melts off. Uh, we're in for a snowstorm, I believe, starting tonight. And I uh, want to be out checking for, you know, canine tracks and stuff like that. Uh, I do have, like I said, I left one, one mink box down there. My, uh, I have a DP down there. And I have a uh, pocket set down there yet that I'm gonna leave till Sunday and then I'll pull those out because Sunday's the last day for my water trapping. And uh, I've been trying to get something in the cable straights, but no uh, no luck yet with that. I've had issues with the deer knocking them down, but I, I had expected that. But uh, we'll see what comes with the snow and then we'll, uh, we'll look for some sign in the snow, hopefully. But bummer, it's the last of my water season uh this will probably be the last video i do for the water season uh i had a good season though i can't complain i, I had good fun trapping the muskrats and it, you know i had good success with them this year all my hag stuff worked really well uh i didn't catch any rats in the floats and as you've seen the other day by the the issue i had with the eagle eating the rat they're not going to come out you know and swim around on the top of the water and crawl out on the bank and stuff like that during the day they're just not going to do that they're not going to expose themselves and i don't think this pond has enough uh you know bank like weed type cover reeds and stuff like that where they can kind of move around and feed in the in bulrushes and stuff that gives them some cover 
this pond does not have that but uh I may set some out for mink, ne you know, next season. I'm going. To, I'm still going to look for areas for mink. I did not catch any mink. Uh, I didn't even see mink tracks. I didn't. I didn't have rats eaten by mink or anything. I had no, no sign of a mink at all. I had mink traps out in three different locations, and I didn't ca catch. I caught grinners <laughs> in mink boxes, but no mink. Uh, so I'm going to have to see, you know, what goes on with that. I'm gonna have to look for new areas for the mink. Hopefully next year we'll see what what we can do with that. I knew it was gonna be a challenge that, to catch a mink. Uh, it's been a while since I've caught one, but we'll we'll keep at it. Well, here I am to take up my mink box, and you can see underneath me. Look at shellfish frozen. You see how it freezes hot when the water comes up. It freezes and then the water recedes and it. So I gotta get my pockets set out. I took my tube up the other day. This is my tube was always been it would have been frozen into the into the bank there when it wasn't working, but my mink box I'm pleased with that. It stayed open. I have it on a downward angle there, so that would have actually worked, you know, in snow. But today unfortunately I'm taking it up. You can see here, look at all the tracks that that are gone past it. Up and around it, squirrels. There's some more there. No coon tracks, of course. Usually when you get snow like this, you're not going to get coon activity. I've never seen coons out in snow. I've never caught a coon in the snow. Usually it takes a couple of days. They get really hungry. You see here my little feeder creek look is frozen. And if you walk out around here carefully without taking a dunk in this freezing water. Look at shellfish. It's all frozen. It's frozen out a little bit more like the opposite side there. But my pocket set is there. There's nothing in it. See, it's completely been uh, frozen shut. So it's not going to work. It's frozen over. But I'm going to get that out and then I'll get my mink box out of here. And we're good to go. I'll show you how cold it is now. This is the rat. That I had in that must or in that uh, mink box here for beet. <laughs> He's frozen solid. This is one of the river rats that I caught. I put it in the mink box for bait. Of course, the mink is gonna love that. That's like natural food for him. But unfortunately, I have not seen any mink this year, this season. But that doesn't mean we won't be back next season to give it a go. Always a sad day when the water trapping is over. I always have good fun with that. Okay, enough wading around in ice water. <laughs> you see where I dug my pockets out there behind me? I wasn't gonna do that on film because either I was gonna end up in the water or the camera was gonna end up in the water. But yeah, that's the end of my water season for this year. I had a good season, cannot complain. I caught 17 rats altogether. I got a coons, I got grinners, no mink. So we'll have to try again for them next season, but time to go move on to the cable restraints. I've had some cables out for a few days, uh, no catches yet. I have very little canine sign though, very little canine sign. The, I did strike a good set of uh, canine tracks this morning when I was out scouting in the, in the fresh snow. I had one big set of coyote tracks and he just clear cut right across the property. But, uh, all right, time to get home, get warmed up a little bit. 